thank you all for coming out. Uh, this is the 17th uh, session that we've had since the beginning of this year. And Tallinn and Ellington represent our 22nd and 23rd out of our 29 communities that we made a commitment last year that we were going to uh, intentionally and deliberately engage in a listening session with each and every one of those communities. And I can tell you, having started this, uh, the staff working on it in January and February, having rolled this out for us to be now 23 towns of our 29 towns in, uh, is a credit to uh, the stakeholders who have come out and shared their time with us, a credit to the staff. So uh, we've had a lot of fun. We've had a lot of very valuable feedback and we're looking forward to that uh, this evening. Uh, but we really want us to be in a position to hear from you uh, and talk about how your input, how the observations of U.S. stakeholders in Tallinn and Ellington uh, are really important to us in helping us to shape uh, our activities and, and answering some very important questions for us. So before we get to that part of the discussion, uh, we just have a, a brief video we'd like to share with you. So, you want to leave a legacy? Why not send me to college? Help me be a better provider. Or help support local programs. At the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, through your generosity, we make both big and small dreams come true. This isn't just a donation, this is an investment. Through our careful financial stewardship, your money will last forever, helping numerous nonprofit organizations in the 29 town greater Hartford area, changing countless lives along the way. It's a tradition that goes back to 1925. The Hartford Foundation for Public Giving is one of the oldest and largest community foundations in the country. We help donors impact the issues they care about, such as education, health, the arts, economic and community development, early childhood, and more. This is your community, and it's our community too. More than 90 years of experience means we understand the big picture, how different issues connect, and what will be needed in the future. The Hartford Foundation is invested in the vibrancy of every town in Greater Hartford. We award grants, share knowledge and data, influence public policy, host events, and build partnerships. But most importantly, we help people like you make a difference. Whether you want to establish a scholarship, join a giving circle, or start your own donor-advised fund, we are here to help. We'll make sure you reach your philanthropic goals, whatever they may be. The gift you give today will make an impact now and for years to come. It's about making Greater Hartford a better place, and you can make a difference. We promise. So, what will your legacy be? The Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, together for good. We needed to make sure that we were proximate and getting close to uh, the stakeholders and the communities that we serve. And there is no better way to do that than to come and have a conversation where we listen. We listen in a very humble way. We listen in a very intentional way to uh, the frustrations, the aspirations uh, that our communities and their stakeholders are facing. Uh, and, 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 and ask just a simple question, a few simple questions of how can we be a more valuable and impactful partner to you? And we've heard uh, a lot of things. Uh, we've heard some very candid and frank feedback, all of which is welcome, all of which is important, all of which is helping us to put together a strategic plan that really speaks to those issues. Uh, and I'll tell you, you know, in, in all honesty, as we have examined our relationship with each of our communities, uh, we want and need to do more here uh, in Tallinn and Ellington. We've had a relationship where we've provided uh, grants to uh, this beautiful library and, and, and the same thing in Tallinn. Uh, there's been some investments that uh, I think it was Adam's Adventure, a playground that uh, was established. But we can do more and we want to do more and we need to do more uh, and we're excited about doing more. But we don't want to be the more, we don't want the more to say, well, you know, we sit in, in, in our offices in Hartford and, uh, you know, these are great places and we sort of think that, you know, we do uh, this for the other communities, so we will do the same thing for uh, Ellington and, and, and Tallinn uh, and be presumptuous and say, well, you know, I'm sure that they, you know, if we're making grants in, in just some general categories, I'm sure they'd be happy about that. We want this, our activities, our investments, our grants here to be reflective of uh, what's needed, what's wanted, what's consistent with helping to uh, improve the quality of life in the communities here. 
what's helping to overcome some of the community frustrations. To the extent that we can operate, and we do operate as a community foundation, uh, you know, it is limited really uh, by the, the imaginations, the ambitions uh, that exist in this community, uh, and everything that we've taken over the course of these discussions uh, is, is helping us really to put together our strategic plan. So uh, that's why we're here. And it's really, again, not to, we've got staff here. Uh, if the, the, the foundation staff would just wave their hand. So uh, we're hearing this from multiple perspectives uh, and really are asking you to just share with us and, and to do more talking than we do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring my uh, opening remarks to uh, an end with this that it doesn't work, as I've said, for you know, the other 21 communities prior, that it doesn't work if it's just uh, us talking or me talking. Uh, we really need and want to hear from you, and we will uh, stay until 7 if, if the conversation takes us that way. If we find uh, that we've got robust conversation and it doesn't uh, take us to that end, that's fine also. Uh, so as I've said time and time again, you know, us hearing from you is why we're here. So questions, uh, observations, comments, uh, along the lines of how we can be a better, more valuable partner. It's a small group. There was a lot of chatter when I came in, so we, we want that to, to, to go on. And, and I, as I stand here with the pressure on me to make sure I'm not the only one talking, uh, what I rely on uh, in the past is first we go with volunteers. So, you know, you raise your hand and, 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 and you speak. Uh, and if not, I've said that if you make eye contact with me, I'll take that as a sign that you want to talk. So this is a very intimate group. So in some groups, it's larger, and some people can get away with sort of hiding, but because you know, you're all virtually within arm's reach of, my, of me, uh, you know, eye contact is going to be hard to avoid. So in that regard, uh, thank you for coming out, and really just want to open it up with, again, your observations, your questions, but thinking about how we as your community foundation of Ellington and Tallinn, how we as also a regional foundation that represents 29 communities in the greater Hartford uh, region can be a more valuable, impactful partner and improving the quality of life and addressing the issues uh, that are faced here uh, in these wonderful communities. So, open the floor. Yes, sir. Uh, Richard Brown, resident. Thank you. Um, quick question for you. As you talk about what the foundation has done, mm -hmm. I think what would be helpful for uh, some of us in the room would be for or, uh, towns of similar size what are some of the things that you've heard them say sure. that are interesting to them and that would kind of help us kind of get our creative juices going? Great question. So we have heard from our towns, some of the smaller towns, um, about the importance of um, uh, planning uh, in their communities. Some of them are looking to uh, find resources that help them to build up their community centers as a meeting place. Uh, thinking about the transition of some of these communities have gone are still very much some of them are very still much very very much bedroom communities but how can they perhaps have a, uh, a, a more active uh, economic base in their town center how can they attract uh, investment that again doesn't try to convert them from a, a small uh, you know intimate community with a high quality of life to something that they're not but recognizing that they also have an appeal uh, and, and things that would attract others to perhaps visit or, or, or engage their town. We have heard the desire for uh, places for people to connect, uh, intergenerational connections. Some towns focus on uh, having a resource for their seniors to gather and to engage. And other towns have pointed out why wow, that's wonderful, but we'd also love that to be a place where our young people uh, can engage uh, with seniors. We have heard uh, towns talk about uh, some young people have expressed desires for uh, artistic outlets and skate parks. Uh, others have very much talked about the importance of preserving their natural assets, their natural resources, whether it's the trails or some of the things that go on. Uh, so it, it really just spans the gamut. One uh, common uh, thread has been a desire to somehow uh, figure out a way to inspire more volunteerism. Uh, in the nonprofits, any activities that are going on in the community. I mean, you always, in every community, you'll find a small group of very dedicated volunteers that just show up for everything. Uh, but they're, you know, you, you, you wear them out, and they can get worn out. So how do you inspire and spread that? that, that? So those are uh, some of the things. But, but again, um, you know, your, the conversation is limited only by your imaginations or the things that you face. But just to give you a flavor of, of what we've heard from 
uh, communities, you know, of similar size uh, throughout the discussions that we've been having over the course of the year. And, and, and part of also what we do is, you know, we want to be able to walk away with something that ultimately you will find very tangible and valuable that's coming out of this. And, and we're excited about kind of what we're hearing because some of the things are about, we found people being connected here. So we've had people stand up and talk about an issue uh, or that they are facing and a challenge of wanting to overcome. And, the, and, and 10 seconds later, someone else will stand up and say, I, you know, I had no idea. Did you, were you aware we had this resource or we have, you know, perhaps uh, an opportunity to connect? So that's also been very valuable that even in small communities, you know, people don't know sometimes what resources or, or others are available there. Yes, sir. My name is Tom Palshaw, uh, longtime resident of Ellington, about 63 years. Okay. Uh, got here at second grade and now I'm 70 years old. God bless you. Uh, one of the things I volunteer for is, is maintaining the hiking trails and you happen to make that comment about mm -hmm. that. And we're constantly trying to expand our trails and connect them so that you can walk all the way to Vernon or uh, anyway. The thing that we've identified as a need here is basically uh, signage that that helps emergency people locate somebody out on a trail. If you get hurt on a trail right. and you have to use your cell phone, mm -hmm. how do the people find you? Mm -hmm. And that's not a big funding item, right. but it's something that we would like to do in town. We're discussing with our trails committee. Mm -hmm. Is that a kind of a project that you would be willing to help with? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And, yeah. and, and those are the types of things, again, that are very hyper-local, hyper-specific, hyper yeah. that we would welcome that conversation yeah. And we're also interested in how could we perhaps uh, position the community to have resources where some of those things can be taken care of just right right here, uh, you know, with yeah, resources yeah. that we might facilitate. Yeah, most of our trails are maintained by volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, Public Works gets involved if it's too big right, of big a things, project. Right. But, uh, but the, the project would involve not only putting identifiers on our signposts that are out there, mm -hmm. but also to make sure that the maps represent that if you say, I'm in trouble and I'm at Hockenham River number five, right. the emergency services will know exactly where to go. And absolutely. I think this is a good project that would be good for our town. We would absolutely, in fact, yeah. I, I, I encourage you to, all of you, to uh, reach out to us after this session and we would welcome that conversation. And that's exactly, those are exactly the types of projects uh, that we want to hear and know about so we can talk about how we can, how we can assist in that, yeah. Thank you, absolutely. Well, this isn't just, uh, Carrie Socha, uh, I live in Ellington. Um, this isn't just specific to, uh, to Ellington, but to the surrounding communities. I don't know if you're aware, but the Opera House Players was located in East Windsor at the, um, at the what is the name of the building, Harry? Upper House Players, yes, okay. So it was called the Upper House Players. So they recently lost their space, and now they're trying to put together, uh, they got a spot in Enfield, but they don't have the funds to develop the theater. So now they have to rehearse at the mall and then go to, the, go to uh, the Enfield, to the high school. And so this isn't necessarily something just for Ellington, but a lot of folks that were from our area, right? Sitting right here were... Yes, and she was in the play with, with Harry. And when they did one of the last productions at the Hopper House Players, um, and so this wouldn't just be specific to this, but keeping the arts mm -hmm. so that it's really hard, especially on children or seniors that are involved in theater, to have to travel to, say, a West Hartford or a downstate, and then keeping this local theater alive where it, it's something that kids get involved with. So. My drama teacher from high school is actually Mooneen Field, and she's very involved. And she said to me, it's a one activity that you can start when you're a kid and go to retirement. And it's like not just for children, but bridging that gap. And so I feel like if we could get some more support behind it, because there, it does service a lot of people, not just the actors and actresses, but also the senior communities. They come out in large, large numbers to see these plays and it's more affordable than say the Bushnell, it's, right. you know, and it gives people an opportunity and an outlet. Mm -hmm. So 
something like that to help with the funding so that we can get the theaters back. Mm -hmm. um, in, in even the one in, I, I think the one too in Manchester was struggling as well, right? They, they ran out of funding. So getting these east of the river has been kind of difficult. Right. You know, so just would mention that. I certainly appreciate that. And, and again, we uh, Thank you, welcome and, and, and truly are excited about projects like that that uh, cross, uh, you know, community jurisdictions. And to your point, you know, it, it, it is uh, wonderful, the uh, Bushnell and some of the theaters that are offered in, in that part of our region, but at the same time, uh, you know, the types of community theaters uh, that you talked about that would uh, be uh, of great benefit and easily accessed uh, and provide an alternative, uh, you know, here in, in Ellington and Tallinn. And, and I want to say, did that, where's Stephanie, did that issue come up? Um, was that specifically the opera when we were in Enfield? Yes. Right, so that issue came up uh, in, in that. Yes, sir. Well, I spent quite a bit of time with Doug. He's, you know, I've been learning a lot. I'm the guy who has contacted the, your organization Good. first. I've been spending a lot of time with a lot of your people in various sections. I'm learning a lot about you. And so at least, we are learning quite a bit how to deal with you. We're hoping there will be eventually a lot of success getting help from you. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so again, one, that issue has come up, so, so, and we were excited about it then. Uh, but to the point that, that Harry just raised is we uh, don't want to assume that you know, the organizations that deal with us and, 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 and deal with us on a regular basis, uh, it might, it's, it's pretty straightforward. But we also want to be sensitive to and open ourselves up to organizations and individuals that haven't worked with us. And how can we be uh, welcoming in the sense of providing a good, so be a good source of in information? How can we ensure that our processes are transparent and easily navigated? Uh, so to your point, uh, we do uh, and are gonna redouble our efforts in terms of just informing and educating and, and, and being as transparent uh, you know, there are processes that we have to follow and, and we do our due diligence, but we want our stakeholders and our communities to see us as a resource, whether it's ultimately because it results in funding or because it results in, you know, education and information that is valuable in some other way. The other thing that we uh, uh, like to, to hopefully offer as a value is our ability to convene, and, and that's the notion. I, I, again, back to this issue of, of the theater, to be able to convene two or three or four communities around a common issue uh, that would benefit all of those communities and figure out how we might provide you know, financial resources or, or other resources to help sustain that. Uh, because at the end of the day, we can't do it alone, but if we can provide seed funding that then allows those organizations or those communities to go out and, 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 and attract others, we, we absolutely, so thank you both for raising that and actually look forward to uh, getting more in depth in that conversation with, with those other communities about, about those types of projects. Other thoughts, again, yes, sir. You're getting me started now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the floor is yours. But, uh, in the center of town here, we have a homestead from a lady that actually ran this library for many, many years. When I was in you know, second grade, we would haul ourselves from the elementary school and parade to the library and she would read us stories. Right. Anyway, when she passed away, the house was turned over to the Ellington Historic Society mm -hmm. and it's difficult getting funding for that for, for whatever projects. Mm -hmm. And I've just recently joined, so I don't know what their needs are, but it's a museum, mm -hmm. it's a nonprofit, is this a kind of thing that you would be interested it in? It is. We have a relationship with a number of historical societies uh, across the region uh, that uh, we, some of them through funding support, others of them through our uh, NSP, it's our nonprofit support program mm -hmm. where they need assistance with a board development or capacity yeah. building. So again, ranging yeah. from financial support to technical assistance yeah. and connecting them with okay. uh, consultants and other knowledge base. Okay. Uh, we absolutely. What's interesting about this house, it's just the way she left it. Right. All original. Right. Really nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my Hi. name is Sarah Poulin. Um, I am the vice president of the Jacob Roger Poulin Foundation. Um, we've actually contacted 
the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving about a grant for a park um, that we are kind of in the midst of, of planning and uh, hopefully uh, beginning very soon. Um, but I think in Ellington, um, you know, we lack a kind of all-inclusive playground for, for our kids and even much past that for, for everyone to be able to come to play. Um, so our thought is to be able to provide a place um, for everybody. And when I mean everybody, I mean there's a space for six to 23 months, mm -hmm. and then there's all the way up to adulthood, and there's um, you know, some, some different needs and, and typical needs areas, and, and it's all kind of integrated into Accessibility for individuals yeah. who may have a variety of. Right, and uh, you know, the, the big, you'd be surprised at how much like the flooring costs for, for an all-inclusive type of playground. Right. Um, you know, when we say all inclusive, it's so that anybody can access it. Um, so to be able to access it on a wheelchair, you, you really you can't do that on on wood chips, right. which are much more cost effective. Right. But you know, the um, the port in place rubber surfacing is really expensive. Um, but so anyway, you know, Adams Adventure, like you mentioned before, they're and uh, you know a much more inclusive playground. Um, you know, and our our goal is to have something. Um, kind of similar to that, but then more, you know, we, we, we don't really have kind of those ramps um, right. in, our, in our thought process because we want kind of everything to be more or less a, a, a level that anyone can reach or influence the play of peers mm -hmm. um, because, you know, ramps are, are great. Like if, once you finally get to a ramp, your friends are gone, like right. as, as far as kids right. playing. Um, so we have some, like, we think kind of unique and, and uh, new ideas to how to have everyone playing together, actually integrated together and not kind of just side by side. Um, and I think that's something this area and pretty much all over there is, is lacking. Again, uh, we, we've heard that on a couple of, uh, more, more, more than a couple of, of um, discussions with our communities having, uh, as you describe it, a, 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 an area that is inclusive for all ages, all uh, mobility uh, phases, and to the extent that We've already started that conversation with you. Uh, we welcome an opportunity to continue that and get in depth into some of the specifics. Um, and again, a perfect example of the types of projects uh, that we can sort of sit and think they might be good ideas, but we want to know what are the things that are specific to the community that provide that broad community benefit. Uh, so again, it's, if that conversation just started, let's continue it and, and, and talk about how we might be a catalyst to, to you know, ultimately helping this community to achieve that. So, thank you, absolutely. And what was, you said it was uh, the Poulin? Jacob Foundation. Foundation, okay, good, good. Based here, is it? Yeah. Is there a specific focus or area that the foundation focuses on? Um, right now we're, we're focused on building a park in memory of Jacob. Okay. Um, Jacob, my son. Yeah. Um, but we have been working Share whatever you're comfortable with. I'm just... Jacob uh, is my son. He passed away from brain cancer on October 1st, 2016. Uh, so two years ago today. Um, so, but our 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 vision was to have somewhere that he could play, no matter what stage in his life, whether he was a a four year old that was swinging from the monkey bars and a big fan of American Ninja Warrior, or you know if, when he was in a wheelchair, to be able to go and play next to his friends. Or, you know, as an adult, um, as an American Ninja Warrior, he should have become. Um, you know, we just wanted something for everybody, all interests, you know, as far as like a playground goes. And um, right here in Ellington, and our, uh, our battle was, um, was pretty, it was just, he fought for six months and it was pretty uh, um, known throughout right. the town. We got amazing support from this town um, throughout the whole thing. and. Um, over the last two years that we've been fundraising and, and bringing more awareness and it's just been um, an amazing outpouring that we received and we want to give something back. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing that. This playground is going to happen. Thank you. Other thoughts and ideas? I mean, we, we've, we've talked about, you know, and it, this is don't want our discussion here to sound patronizing, but everything that has been mentioned here, 
these are exactly the types of things, not just that we talk about in concept, that we support from the notion of the, the trails and, 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 and signage on the trails to our relationships and funding with historical societies to the arts and the culture, uh, which is uh, exceptionally important for the quality of life in all of our communities to you know, working with organizations to uh, establish a, uh, a, a, an inclusive and accessible play area uh, you know, that will have, uh, you know, a legacy and benefit to the community for years to come. So each and every one of these things are things that, you know, we didn't come to just talk about in concept. We came to talk about how we can actually uh, provide that. Yes. <laughs> that was me for a second. <laughs> um, so there are a couple other areas that I think um, would be helpful as a foundation goes forward. Uh, one of them is... Um, looking at economic development, technical assistance for both Ellington and Tolland. I think as we go forward, one of the things we look at and struggle to do is figure out how can we grow our tax base? Um, what are the type of developments that are suitable for our towns? And I, I think anything that we can do to enlighten both the residents and um, our administrators to help them understand what it is we're looking for, what are you seeing as best practices across the country or what have you, so that we can best position ourselves to take right. advantage of that. Um, in Ellington, we have a farmer's market um, that we're, I think is a town we're pretty proud of. And to the extent that the foundation would be able to help us leverage growing that and, and making that uh, much more effective than it is, um, marketing it and, and really the technical assistance behind how do you really take it to the next level. And I forget, the Tollins version, but they, they do something in their little downtown, okay. and I don't know if there are any Tollins residents. Yeah, so she can speak about the Tollins Green. Um, here you go. <laughs> Come on, you, you got the microphone now. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Tolland, um, and I have a perspective as a parent, and I'm a Board of Education member, which is how I ended up here. You had sent an email out to uh -huh. us. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not really sure, you know, I, everything that he said, like, those are struggles for us, economic development especially. Like, we have areas, and we're working on our plan of conservation and development right now, and, um, you know, like, I think our community could really help with just, like, you know, what we can do, because right. everybody's got ideas, and they all have a vision for what they want, but nobody can kind of get that vision together with an actual developer yep. <laughs> to do it. And um, I know Ellington, South Windsor, a lot of the communities around us, we have the foundation issue, which is really going to impact a lot. You know, our, the, the people who can give money, it's their homes. So, you know, we, we're going to lose money on a lot of levels. So. Right. And this is, you mean the actual, the foundation, yeah, the, the, the crumbling, foundation, right. The crumbling right. foundations? The crumbling foundation area. Yes. Right. Where a, a number of homes from a quarry um, that... 1990 to right. 80s? 80s until about 2016, 16. Right. Um, where the foundation was mixed with um, something Pyrotite. that's actually <laughs> causing them to right. deteriorate. Yeah. The, okay. the issue that we have is there isn't yeah. a resolution right, right now. Insurance companies won't cover it. Um, the state did pass a bill in the, in the last... Um, uh, the last cycle to address some of the issues okay. yeah. is not nearly enough. Okay. Um, and, and so we're trying to figure out as a community, what does that mean? Okay. So there are people who aren't able to, are making the choice in some cases to actually walk away. Walk away because the cost yeah. is yeah, worth it. Right. It's and, and, exorbitant. And, it's awful. <laughs> my wife, when we moved a year ago, we, you know, happened to hear this. And, and, I'm, and we're just, and, and again, we're just moving here. So, you know, just mortified of, the story and how it started impacting uh, uh, residents. And then NPR, WNPR just had a sort of update on this. And an individual was talking about, uh, both on NPR, then I happened to, to run into an individual who was talking about how the, you know, he said his house was just, I don't know, you know, it was a $300,000 house, but it was going to be $240,000. The fix to jack the house up completely, take out the existing foundation, and put it, and there was just no way. I mean, there's no practical way that that would ever occur. So, to your point of people walking away, so what you both raise uh, in terms of community economic development, I mean, you know, a, a perfect, a perfect uh, a segue into uh, the the Hartford Foundation has been involved in community economic development uh, in the past, but we have, uh, with the board's support, 
uh, made a very intentional pivot, not a pivot away, but in addition to our traditional grant making, a very intentional pivot toward economic and community development, both in terms of uh, helping uh, towns plan, and you talked about it. I mean, there's lots of ideas out there, uh, but without synthesizing those ideas and that vision into an actual pragmatic plan, it becomes very difficult because you've got competing interests and limited resources. And uh, towns that are, you know, have an agriculture, a strong agricultural economy, but understanding the importance of diversifying, uh, you, you know, uh, that economy uh, and, 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 and that approach. So we are eager as we move into that to be able to provide the technical assistance that you talked about, uh, helping to connect towns with the expertise and individuals that have uh, experience in similarly situated communities, whether here uh, in the region, in the state, or perhaps other places of the country. And also beyond that, uh, the, the foundation, we are taking a very um, aggressive role in looking at projects where we uh, may actually serve as an investor. So in the impact investing where we would provide resources uh, that would be a catalytic uh, investment in projects uh, that would be transformative in terms of the economies of, of the town. So it's an exciting and a new area for us. Uh, and you know, to be able to stand here as your community foundation with the support of our board and you know, significant resources that have been allocated that move uh, communities from you know, concept and planning and talking about it to actually the technical expertise and assistance to put that, uh, those ideas into a vision, into a plan to identify projects that, you know, it, it still ultimately requires um, private developers coming in. But what we can do is that communities like this, there's a lot of potential, but if you look at a traditional private developer, they may say, yeah, but the return just isn't there. You know, it, it's a great idea, but the, the, but the community is so small, as they work the numbers, they, they, they don't see themselves being able to make, make that financial return. Well, our interests, um, in a private developer, there's nothing wrong with that. What they look at is how do they get their money out? How do they get the profit? And there's that, that's absolutely the way it should work. As a community foundation, we look for what's the community benefit. We are fortunate to be in a way, in a place where we've got our resources uh, that are invested, that provide us the return that is necessary for us to do uh, the grant making that we do. But we also are fortunate to have resources that we can put into projects in communities that we don't have to look first and foremost at a financial return. In fact, we can define the return much differently than a financial return. We can say, boy, if there's a community benefit attached to this that doesn't have a, a, a dollar sign attached to it, but it's a community benefit, that to us uh, is, uh, is, is something that we take into significant consideration as we look for these types of uh, these projects. So I'm excited that, in fact, it was just earlier, uh, today's Monday, it was last week, uh, if you didn't see it, on Thursday we issued a press release and we have created a, a separate entity within the foundation called HFPG, Hartford Foundation, Hartford foundation for Public Giving, HFPG, exclamation point, <laughs> Impact, Greater Hartford. Uh, so if you, you know, go to our website or if you just Google that, uh, the idea is to create this entity that allows us to go above and beyond our traditional grant making for the very specific, uh, some of the ideas that we've talked about here. How can we be a more catalytic and relevant player in community economic development for communities that have great potential, but that just aren't the places where we see traditional capital flowing to. So we're excited about that. We're having conversations in all 29 of our communities. Uh, there is not one community that is more well positioned or more prioritized than the other, you know, this is, it, it are, there are conversations we're having about how we can specifically around community and economic development uh, be a partner. I saw your hand up. Well, I was just going to add to the uh, foundations how it actually impacts all of us, even though I might not have it, but it really takes a big chunk out of our tax base. Absolutely. And right now, I think we have 51 homes in Ellington that have this problem. Right and it is taking a, a big chunk out of what we would have for regular. We don't have an awful lot of business in town, but uh, And those individuals, it is a again, I mean, you need businesses, you need individuals that have disposable income, and if they are faced right. with this, a, a, a cost uh, that exceeds the value of their home, you know, the last thing they're thinking about, oh, you know, how are we gonna go out and, and do the things, you know, 
go out to dinner and do all these other things. It becomes, especially in a small community, 51 homes is, is a significant number, you know, a, a huge number in a community th th these sizes. Uh, and you talk about people that most of us, I mean, that's the biggest, you know, investment that you have, the biggest asset that you have. And if it is now compromised because of that, you're right, it has ramifications far beyond yes. uh, th th yep. those individuals, which is serious enough. One thing that I'd, I'd like to try to get to do is in town, uh, a lot of towns, I think Glastonbury did the apples, West Hartford did the cows, um, Granby did horses. I'm really impressed with Simsbury. I know we're not Simsbury and everything else, but the bronze statues, uh -huh. have you been on the statue trail? No, I have not. It's uh, unbelievable. It draws so many people in, and it would be a great... Um, something to add to Ellington. It would help our businesses, people come. It's, uh, you, you put them out at different places. There's a mailman at the right. post. There's all different things, and you have a, um, where to go to find right. these. And people just come from everywhere. And that would tie into our Nellie McKnight Museum, mm -hmm. too, where they also had something <laughs> like our museum there that they made it more inviting and... Right. Uh, it just tied the town together. Quality of life, something that, again, brings the town around, something that is, is, is beneficial, that is an attraction point. Uh, I'm from Youngstown, Ohio, so in Youngstown we did penguins. Uh, not that it's an Arctic uh, location, but that's the, that's the mascot of Youngstown State University. Uh, and with the cows, we were, Sunday we went out to uh, breakfast after church, and my son, our son who was eight, for whatever reason, I mean, there was this multicolored cow, but... When he got out of the car, he like hesitated for something, and as he said, you know, is that a real cow? And they're like, Ethan, you're eight, you know, real cows typically aren't painted, you know, in this, but it was just this whole notion, yeah, exactly, it's a purple cow, but it's just this whole notion that that was the thing that drew his attention, of course, then he was more than happy then to go engage and, and ask a thousand questions about it. But you're right, how things like that, you know, become uh, just one additional part of a tapestry of, of what makes a community, uh, what adds to the, you know, the specialness of any particular community, what becomes a, a point to draw people in or, or pull people together around. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Where's my guy? Me. Oh, <laughs> easy. Hi, my name is Sharon. I live here in Ellington. Um, three comments. First of all, I attended this one that you did at Rockville Library, and I believe a wonderful project that's coordinating all the volunteer groups in town is on tap because of your involvement, which is really nice. Um, following up on the economic development, one thing that I've noticed, which I think is true of Vernon and Ellington and Tolland, is the lack of affordable transportation here in town. Um, I had a period of time a couple of years ago when I was without a car for a year. Fortunately for me, one of my neighbors is also my co-worker, so I was able to go to work. Otherwise, I would have been out of a job because there's no bus transportation here in town. I think it's a hindrance to businesses who might want to move here. There's no transportation for their workers. Um, people here in town who are looking for a job, if they don't have good transportation, they can't take a job. So I, if there's any way that the Hartford Foundation could work with some of the surrounding towns to lobby the legislature, learn to lobby, do whatever, you know, we don't, our towns don't have the kind of money to lobby like some of the other parts of the state do. And I think it would be very helpful to us if we could get something like that going. And I know that was an issue that came up in Vernon, was no transportation. And the final comment I want to make, and this is not any kind of negative remark about, about the Hall Memorial Library, because I love them, but if you're looking for grant money, we do have the Foundation Center database at the Rockville Library that you can come and use for free, and it gives you access to hundreds of thousands of foundations that you can look for grant money. So just put a plug in for that. So. Oh, that's a negative law. That's, that's, that's a point of information we want shared. And, and thank you for pointing out, yes, we are uh, excited. And, and because we heard the need for volunteers and, and communities that were appreciative of the volunteers but yet struggling to um, expand the volunteer base, uh, and that was, I, I think we have an unbroken streak of hearing that in every one of the conversations. Uh, it, at, I, I think it was at that one, we just, I sort of spontaneously announced that in 2019, we were going to host a symposium to try to tackle that issue and invite all of our communities. I, I don't know all the details, logistics yet, so I announced it and then I knew I was gonna have to go face the staff uh, and, and figure out how to put this together. But really, uh, they were excited because we've heard it and, 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 and our goal, would be to uh, bring in some thought leaders around this and 
uh, whether they're from the region, from the state, or somewhere else in the country, uh, that have faced this and, and talked to us and share with us, when I say us, not the foundation, I mean all of the interested communities, about programs or approaches that have helped to really uh, sustain and expand volunteers. And is there some mechanism, uh, we've already heard a couple of ideas of, once you find something that works, how do we scale it so it can be shared and tapped into amongst all of our communities? And yes, you also raise an issue of transportation, which we've heard multiple times. And you know, you're right, that is a issue that ultimately is in the public sphere. So uh, you know, you know, we don't, our resources are wholly inadequate, uh, but you pointed out an area that we are also active in, in, in and that's advocacy and public policy. Uh, matter of fact, our board a couple of years ago uh, approved us to be engaged in that regard and we have ramped up, in fact, Alyssa Gordon is the vice president and oversees uh, that area of, of other things. She oversees that area. So she and her staff uh, have really helped us to more recently uh, be involved. And I've had the opportunity to testify uh, before a, a commission uh, that was uh, put together by the legislature. We've submitted testimony. So on a more uh, frequent basis, as we hear these issues of importance, uh, and we think that you know, if we could lend our voice to that, uh, not only lend our voice, but if we can help to bring together research uh, and, 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 and uh, share where other communities and other states have begun to tackle this issue for the benefit of the residents. So you're absolutely right. Um, you know, as I moved here a year ago and made use before I you know, purchased, uh, you know, got a vehicle when I came here, uh, made use of CT Fast Track, but that happened to work because of where I was located. That worked for me. Understanding that even while that's a decent start, it has limitations that don't necessarily, you know, serve uh, the residents uh, in places like Ellington and Tall and, and, and so many others. So to that extent, we do think it's important that we not only uh, utilize the financial resources uh, that we're afforded by our donors, that we also uh, use that platform that we have to publicly advocate uh, and to weigh in on, on issues uh, that are relevant. The other thing I would point out, while that's an issue that's specific to many communities in our region, we know that the state isn't going to say, oh, well, you know, we've got a handful of, uh, of, of very legitimate needs in uh, the greater Hartford region, so we're going to have state policy. That's why we also have collaborated with and on a regular basis collaborate with community foundations across the state because that issue is not an issue that's uh, solely and uniquely impacting communities in a greater Hartford region. I'm sure that there are communities in the southern part of the state, there are communities in the eastern part of the state, all over. So to the extent that uh, we as a community foundation that represents this region talk and share uh, with other community foundations and we identify areas of statewide interest we collectively and together lend our voice. And that carries even a lot more weight because just between ourselves, uh, you know, Eastern Community Foundation, Community Foundation of Greater New Haven, um, and Fairfield County Community Foundation, we cover a significant part of the state, both geographically and in terms of population. So if, and those are just the four of us, there's others, but if the four, five, or six of us are weighing in on a statewide issue, you know, it does hopefully get the attention of the legislature. And then if we're willing to put resources on the table to perhaps commission research or support those issues. So I'm glad you pointed that out, uh, but just to tell you that we, any time that there's an issue that we think uh, could be advanced, uh, we are eager to collaborate with other community or other you know, family foundations uh, or, or, or other foundations across the state because we think that to that extent that philanthropy, um, whether it's corporate, family, or community, uh, some of those areas really, uh, a united voice is much more powerful. So thank you. Yeah, sure. Library, our host. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thing. from the library, thank you all for coming. We're glad to have you here. Um, I want to jump back to the cows for just a second. We have real cows here in Ellington, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and those cows are beautiful, but we have real ones, and that's very important because there are eight-year-olds out there who do not know that cows aren't painted, and they do not know that they live in the, in the field in or the field. barn right. or whatever. So if there was something, some way that you could help us 
um, celebrate our agricultural community Absolutely. and Tolland as well and, and Vernon and East Windsor and all of us, that would be that's very important and we can't forget that. Okay, so we'll do that piece. And then I'm going to jump to community health because knowing the um, farmer's market piece, that's all an important piece of community, of community health. I'm on a committee with the North Central Health District where we're trying to identify issues, health issues in our community, and they range from the ones that we know, the opioid crisis, but, and, and obesity, but also just people don't know how to put together a healthy meal, and they don't know where the healthy food comes from, and that's an issue. And so it takes education, it takes time, it takes planning, it takes money <laughs> to, to put all that together. So something along that line would be useful as well. And then I'm going to jump to the library a little bit. Sure. We are the very happy recipients of a grant from the Hartford Foundation in 2010. We were able to create a, um, a computer lab downstairs and some laptops, and we held many, many, many classes. And it's hard to think that it was only that few years ago, if you will, but it was many years ago in the, the light years of computer when people did not know how to work a mouse and that kind of a thing. So it was, that was very useful to us to be able to provide that kind of education. And um, we have a wonderful library. We have great support, community support, financial support. We are the community center. We, we feel intergenerational. Um, and we run a very good basic traditional and little non-traditional library. But there are those cool new things out there that West Hartford can do, other libraries can do, and our community members deserve that, deserve that as well. But it's that, it's that little jump, that um, the financial, that little jump, the same little jump that, was allowed, that allowed us to make that computer lab and buy those computers all at one time so that we could have a program. And so that's, that's where we sit on the, we're on the yeah. edge there of, you know, where, can we jump? Can we jump farther into the 21st century? Right. And, and you all could certainly help us with that. Well, thank you. And, and, you know, we want to know how we can be that bridge so it isn't that far of a jump, uh, whether it's in technology or, or any other number of things. And you talked about the importance of, of connecting the beauty of an agricultural community, uh, the understanding uh, of how what we eat and what sustains us gets on our plate, you know, whether the distribution, all, all those things. How do we connect uh, families and, and, and particularly young people who may not be aware of that, that this is a stone's throw away. I mean, it doesn't come from some, some place out, you know, in Kansas or, or Nebraska. You know, our agriculture, much of it comes from, you know, a place that is, is a, 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 just a brief drive. Uh, and how then do we also make sure that young people out here you know, can appreciate uh, what some of, uh, you know, the other communities offer in terms of you know, what, it is it, what is it like when you, when you live in a big city or, you know, an urban area and you have, you know, both challenges and the opportunities of living in an urban area and challenges and opportunities. So we can understand that, you know, one isn't better than the other, but we as a society and community, the fact that we can appreciate that um, and, 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 and make sure that we are, one of the benefits that I, uh, and our, my family have enjoyed here is that you get both experiences. You can go to you know the Bushnell or see you know the you know the things that are part of an urban community. And at the same time, as we drove, in fact, I was uh, not on, not on my handset. I was on the you know Bluetooth. I was both hands on a wheel. But talking to my wife uh, as we were as I was driving out here, just making note as we've explored and, and started to explore. But just making note and seeing some of the farms and right away. Um, the, not, not clots, but the, the family, there was a big um, farm that has like a country store and furn handcrafted furniture. It starts with a K, I can't think of that. Right, right. So thinking like, oh wow, another place that I jot down that we gotta bring Ethan to, just, and, and my mother's with us, just to, again to be able to experience those types of things. And I think that's one of the beauties. So we've heard that, how do we connect communities that are in a region uh, that have their own wonderful identities, but also making sure that we can appreciate the benefit of the region. And with that, one problem that, uh, one thing that we have in Ellington that's very unique versus any other town is cows. Um, we have Oak Ridge Farms right down the road here who just redid their, their barn. They put in a rotary milking parlor and they put in a viewing center. 
But with the price of milk, which is very low, they're not making any money. They're just trying to survive. They need money to finish that. And they want to really go for ag tourism. And they've got it all set up where they can bring busloads of uh, children in. And they've had a few open houses, and it's very, very interesting. They could take you right through the barn. They could show you where the cows are, how they mix their feed, how much a cow eats. Sometimes you usually see a cow having a calf because I think they're milking 2,000. Yeah, uh, a lot of cows. Right. So they're really set up, but they need money to finish it and the state to finish up with their permits and everything else. But this is going to be a very big draw for ag tourism, and it's very important. But maybe I can get them in touch with you. You maybe could take a tour through it and try to help them out a little bit. Sure. So, so we don't, we're not permitted to deal with private entities, uh, uh, for-profit or private entities in that regard. But to the extent that if um, uh, ag tourism becomes a a priority uh, of the community at large, and to the extent that uh, our relationship with nonprofits or our relationship with the communities, uh, we can help facilitate that uh, type of thing. So, uh, again, that's one of the things as we talk about community and economic development. How do, how can, how might we help position communities, both in terms of the planning or some of the resources that would go to the community, to uh, ultimately be a place that. Uh, agricultural tourism becomes a, a good part of a diverse economic base. They've been very uh, gracious the last couple of years since this project has been completed to open it up to the whole community. Um, they've fed everybody, they've given tours, right. um, they've done an awful lot for the community just to give back. So they sound just a good, a good community stakeholder, a good partner. And, and That's great. Right, right, yep. Right, thank you. Jerry, this is just for you personally. Their barn is a 10-acre barn. You've got to think a 10 acre uh, bar. And for, in Tallinn, it's because the expense of getting a bus for a day and transporting the children there, we just can't afford it. Isn't that, I mean, it's so sad. <laughs> We don't do our. We do field trips. We do field trips. They gotta get a few more permits, but they cost money. Uh, okay. So they need help. So 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 let me give you an example. If if there is a nonprofit organization uh, that that might be you know facilitating that, so uh, you know that's again those are types of conversations. This is a perfect example. You know we've got elementary school kids right here in town that aren't able to to see you know a a, a wonderful. Uh, you know, active farm, uh, transportation issues. So, you know, while we don't provide the buses, if there is an organization in town that says, hey, you know, we've got the kids here, we've got a farm here, what is it that would take, what is it that would take to be able to facilitate that? Uh, you know, that's a conversation we would like to have. I, I don't know that there's an easy, but that's a conversation we'd like to have. Is there an organization that says, hey, you know, we, are already in the business of transporting or you know we have the ability to do that that's where you know if we might be able to play a role in convening or play a role in providing resources that might overcome some of those things those are exactly the types of things that we want to be involved in in the community or and or as I said there are some things that uh, you know we might support through our uh, grant programs but what we're also hearing, and this is another example of uh, what we are giving thought to, how can we perhaps seed resources in a community so that conversation can happen with resources already available for the community's use? Uh, one of the things that uh, I want to make you all aware of, and we hope that you're able to join us, is on November 15th, uh, we are having our annual uh, giving, again, recognizing our donors, our stakeholders, and all 29 of our communities. Uh, from what we've heard from here tonight, even in the conversation that we've had for the past uh, you know, 50 minutes or so, from what we've heard from the other 23, there are some very specific and tangible things that we're uh, putting together, that we're working with our board, uh, that we hope to be able to announce 
uh, on the 15th. So I hope that you can, uh, you're all going to get a, an invitation. Everyone who has come to one of our listening tours is going to get an invitation. And I would encourage you, if you can join us, it is free. Uh, there will be, um, you know, uh, food and, uh, you know, we'll have some students providing entertainment, musical entertainment. It won't be a long evening, uh, a chance to really just connect and, and, and mingle. But there'll be some important things that we hope to share that are a direct result of these conversations and some important things that we hope to announce that will reflect uh, how one of the ways we hope to address some of these things uh, specific to each one of these communities, specific to Ellington, specific to Tallinn. So uh, we're, we're, we're working to get final uh, approval from our board, but I would hope that you would also be able to, some of you, all of you, hopefully, if not all of you, as many as you can, can join us that night because some of the questions that are being asked or some of the ideas that are being talked about tonight, uh, I think come November 15th, there'll be a much more clear picture of, I think, how we hope to work and partner with you all to do that. So. Yes. Services, but quick question: Any opportunity for Ellington and Tallinn to have planning grants for the school family community partnerships like Manchester and Vernon had? Uh, I think so. I, that's one of the things. That's a great question that uh, we've uh, worked with the Alliance districts and family school partnerships. Uh, but what we found is that has been an invaluable resource, and and you know to the extent that we can uh, start having that conversation with other districts, yeah, we we we'd welcome that. Welcome that conversation. Hey, hey, Jay. Over for something. <laughs> Just because you can speak about the youth challenges That's in true. Holland. I grew up in Ellington. I lived in Holland, so I'm all covered. <laughs> okay, Nancy Dunn. I'm the assistant director of Talent Human Services and their Youth Service Bureau coordinator. Um, to pick on one of the comments that you made on the theater program, to pick up on that, um, that is invaluable. Um, our, one of our programs, our biggest program, is a summer theater program. And we have about 140 youth who are involved in that. And the volunteerism that we get from the parents and the support from the business community, from the organizations within town is invaluable. Um, and at this point, it is a self-sustaining program, Good. which we're very happy about. The one thing that we're sort of missing is it's the only thing that they, that they have right for the kids who are not in sports or who aren't dancing um, every night of the week. Uh, they have this program for five weeks during the summer. Uh, we would like to see something that happens more often because our, our participants range from like six years old to 18 and then some of those kids go on to be our staff members and we're almost all of our staff has grown up through the program. I hear parents tell me all the time what it does for, for kids as far as developing their self-confidence. And most of them don't go on to be you know, professional performers, okay. although right. some of them do. Right. But they still have that love of, of theater and dancing and the, the, team, the team building that it brings. So if anything, I would love to find a way to give more kids an opportunity to do that more often, um, and I think that would be that would be a great thing. And we draw from all the communities around, right. not not just Tallinn kids. And I think that intercommunity relationship right. is huge. Right. It's a huge benefit to our kids. Please engage us in our conversation. We've been having ongoing conversations, expressing how important arts and culture are to our communities. How important arts and culture are as a tool to bring people together, to address issues within a community. Uh, and you're right, even if they don't go on to be a, a, a professional performer, uh, you know, the confidence, because you're going to have to engage people, whether you're standing in front of a room, uh, whether you're making a presentation, whether you're in a job interview, whatever the case is. So to be able to imbue, uh, to instill uh, children and students with those skills that will provide them a lifetime of benefit, you know, in ways that are um, you, you know, consistent with, with how we are seeking to, uh, you know, make our grant investment. So I, I, I would invite you and encourage you to engage us in that conversation because uh, we have for decades had a, a strong commitment to arts and culture uh, in the Hartford Foundation and that is uh, unchanging. 
what we are doing, though, is looking at how arts and culture can be a tool to advance any number of, of things that, uh, you know, the disparities and, and a whole host of things. So I, I, I just, I would, I would really encourage you to uh, in, invite us into that conversation. Yes. Right, I told you, it's just a blank, a blank, we started with a blank sheet with the name on it and it's transformed, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, hi, my name's Steph. To piggyback on what Jay was saying about Greater Together, actually your invitation is on your chair. Oh, very good. So make sure you grab that. We'd hope to see you there. So any, uh, you know, we got about maybe 10 minutes left, but we, we don't want to uh, keep you any, any longer than, uh, you know, the discussion is going. Um, any final thoughts or, or questions or comments? I can tell you that I, I can't tell you how valuable this these conversations have been to uh, help us direct our work, help us put together our strategic plan, and the conversations can't stop here. We didn't go through uh, 23 of the 29 communities so we could check a box, pat ourselves on the back, say, oh, you know, we talked to our communities, we're going to go back to, to doing what we've always been doing. Uh, think of this, while we've been around for 93 years, think of this as a reintroduction uh, to each of our communities of your foundation, uh, the work that we're doing, how we want to ensure, we have to ensure that it's relevant to the communities, how we want it to be impactful, how we are taking more risk, how we are coming out of our, our, our shell and, 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 and recognizing that, um, you know, as the landscape has changed, as the community has changed, and we look at the region, we also want to be as relevant to each and every one of these communities uh, as we, you know, are to the region. But that only happens if you engage us, uh, you know. So some of the thoughts and ideas when we're saying, uh, when I'm saying I invite you to the conversation, I'm not just saying that uh, a, 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 as a cliche. I'm saying that please contact us and reach out to us so we can continue the specificity amongst these conversations. We can't fund and don't fund everything. Some ideas that start in concept ultimately aren't able to be uh, uh, funded for any number of reasons. Uh, but an equal number of them that start as a concept ultimately, whether we're supporting it or connecting it to some other support, I don't want you all to leave here thinking, oh, that we, we talked about some interesting things, and then six months for a year from now, you know, oh, whatever happened to the, those ideas we talked about, that's where we want this engagement uh, to be uh, of value to you. So to that end, I would just say, if you can join us on the 15th of November, uh, I am uh, all but certain that you will find that uh, one way that we express our appreciation, uh, hopefully, is, 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 is in a, uh, a, a way that allows some of these things to move from concept and discussion to actuality, uh, whether it's through our traditional grant programs or through other ideas that are on the table. So. Thank you all very much for uh, sharing your time with us. There are still plenty of refreshments left. Uh, and hope to see you on the 15th. And even if we don't see you on the 15th of November, uh, hope to absolutely continue these conversations and move them from conversation to action uh, where, where, where uh, you know, we can build that case, whether it's, again, our funding or us convening and connecting uh, conversations with communities, both Tallinn and Ellington, but also uh, your communities across the, the region. So thank you all very much. Have a wonderful evening.